welcome back to Normski TV. I yeah, I didn't manage to um, post one yesterday. I was feeling a little bit under the weather. I had a bit of a backache, so I just wasn't really up to it really. So um, um, yeah, I wasn't really um, up to it. Yeah, long and short of it, you know what I mean. So today I'm feeling a little bit better and um, just again scouring to see what's new in terms of um, Arsenal and their transfer. Um, what's an exciting um, debate between Lee Gunner and DT concerning Ozil um, and the fact that um, he's deferring or is not taking the pay cut at the moment um, because he wants to see basically what Arsenal are doing come the future in terms of where the money is going to go and so on. So he hasn't refused. He hasn't refused not to take the pay cut. He just wants to get some reassurances. So it was a real good debate and really enjoyed it. And that was on um, AFTV. Um, yeah, so today, um, just looking at uh, um, what's in the news and uh, obviously Aubameyang, um, Lacazette, you know, uh, two of our main strikers, um, you know, are they going to stay at Arsenal or is um, Mikhail Arteta going to cash in on both of them? You know, Aubameyang is coming up into his last year of his um, contract and uh, is he going to sign? You know, it's quite frustrating at the moment because we're just not hearing any noise coming out there. We don't know how far they are, if they're having any kind of talks. Um, so at the moment, you know, do, do, is Arsenal going to take that risk? And like all other players, you know, the likes of um, Ramsey, letting him go on a free, are we going to sell him? I mean, you know, Bamiang is our most prolific player um, in the Arsenal team in terms of his goal scoring, he's our captain. And um, it would be a sad thing, you know, for him to um, end up going um, because for whatever reason, Arsenal have not sat down properly with him and said, right, here's the money, whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's not good. And Lacazette as well, um, who's still got two years left on his contract, but they may want to cash in on him as well. Um, you know, there, there's clubs like Atletico Madrid that are interested in him. I think Inter Milan are interested in him as well. And Arsenal, I know Arteta is looking to um, strengthen certain areas in in the team. And and there's talk, um, just looking at the article here, that um, uh, the Gunners um, are looking to do some sort of reshuffling come the summer, which will include a banner. Bamiang and and um, and Lacazette. Now, if they were to both leave, um, who is Arsenal going to go and get to replace them? You know, they're both great strikers. They're both good friends, and to lose both of them would just be absolutely a nightmare. And um, the, the, the Express Sport understands that um, Arsenal are uh, looking to try and replace. Um, then possibly with uh, two players, uh, namely um, Ryan Fraser from Bournemouth, who's um, his contract, he leaves on a free in the summer. And then you've got Jokovic, who plays for Real Madrid, um, who's not really done too well there at the moment. He's only scored two goals. And um, yeah, he hasn't worked out for him at all. He hasn't not worked, for, worked out at all for him in... in um, in Real Madrid. Now, Arsenal got loads of uh, potential, say, say, potential um, attackers in terms of the likes of Gabriel, um, you've got Nicolas Pepe, you've got um, Eddie Enketia, Biako Saka, even though Biako Saka is playing as a makeshift left back, you know, he does get forward a lot and very good. You've got Reese Nelson, again, another young player. And obviously Emil Smith Rowe when he comes back from his loan, um, he, you know he would be good, you know, in that kind of final third. But these guys are all young players. They're all young players, and 
to lose the likes of a Bamiyang and to lose the likes of a Lacazette, who are very experienced players, um, you need someone in that area. And that's why I spoke about these two players. Um, and according to um, the Bleacher Report, that um, they're, um, the, the Arteta is focusing on um, bringing in, you know, what I term as um, some sort of bargain signings. Now, those bargain signings would be, you know, um, Ryan Fraser on a free transfer from, um, he's 26 years old from Bournemouth. He's, he'll come on, on a free. I don't think his wages will be a problem. He knows the Premier League, fine. He knows the Premier League well. Um, and last season, we was linked with him heavily. But um, for whatever reason, he, he didn't actually um, end up um, making that move over um, to Arsenal. Um, and so he would naturally come on a free to us. Um, looking at his stats, uh, you know, he's, he, he's um, played uh, uh, 28 Premier League games. He's scored seven goals and he's had 14 assists. And that was in last the 38 matches last term. So, you know, that that is that is a good contribution. And he's not playing in a I've no disrespect to Bournemouth, a brilliant team. But if you know he came to Arsenal, Scottish player, quick, you know, diminutive player, very low centre of gravity, can play in the on the left wing or can play in the, the, that number 10 role. So that's the sort of area that he's played in. So he could come in on a free. Um, to Arsenal and right now with the situation with the this COVID you know there's not a lot of money to be sort of splashing about not a lot of money to be splashing about um, and then you've got Luka Jokovic who's um, currently at Real Madrid and I said um, Arteta's Arteta, we've been linked with him Arteta um, is on Arteta's radar um, but I think if he would if he was to come to Arsenal it'll probably um, more likely come on a loan deal um, and just to just read some information on me he joined he's a Serbian joined um, um, Real Madrid from um, Eltrick Frankfurt for a fee I think, of 50, I think it was 50 million pounds um, last summer 22 years old um, and he's only scored as I said he's only scored two goals um, in the 24 appearance this season so he's he is really dropped off compared to um, what he was doing in in, in um, Eldrick Frankfurt. I mean, he scored 27 goals in 48 games um, the season before playing for Frankfurt. So you could understand why Real Madrid went in for him because you know when you're banging in those sort of goals, you know it's absolutely amazing. Do you know what I mean? Um, just mad. You know, it's like a goal at every other game. Um, so. You know he he is he's gone to Real Madrid, and um, it doesn't seem like you know you you know it, it doesn't seem like um, he's he's hit the ground running there. And there's talk that maybe he could, you know, possibly they could do some bargaining with either doing some sort of possibly swap deal um, with a Bamiang. I know. Zidane is interested in Aubameyang and I know Aubameyang you know he came out some time ago and said that you know his grandfather I believe said that he would love for him to play for um, Real Madrid so that's maybe something that's playing on Aubameyang's mind that he's gonna you know wants to go to Real Madrid just to kind of fulfill that dream fulfill his grandfather's dream as well um, but as I said there's not a lot of money you know generally right across all leagues um, European leagues as well as the Premier League um, but if there's going to be any sort of deal as I said it could either be a loan deal or maybe as um, Kevin Campbell was saying maybe using this as a bargaining tool to um, do a swap deal with Real Madrid but you know even though you know he, he wasn't cutting it in, in, in Real Madrid he may come to um, Arsenal and you never know you, you, you've got to give him a chance but I just can't see us without a Bam, especially a Bamiyam. I just can't see us without him because he's such a prolific player, he's such an important player for Arsenal. And if we are to make it into the Champions League, he's probably the only player that can really um, 
get us past that. So um, we'll have to see what happens there. But, you know, if there are the two players that are going to replace Aubameyang, what do you think? Do you think Jokovic would be the right player to um, replace um, Aubameyang? Do you think Ryan Fraser would be good? You know, he knows the league. Would he be good to come in as well uh, as part of that attacking uh, uh, per, you know, person in the last third yeah, as an experienced player, someone that's played in the Premier League? Do you think Aubameyang, Lacazette, if he was to have these two, Jokovic and Ryan Fraser, would that be a good deal? Please put it in the comments. Tell me what you think. I've still not seen any comments from anybody, so please, guys, please comment. It'd be, it'd be interesting just to know your thoughts on that. Would you have Jokovic from Real Madrid and Ryan Fraser from um, Bournemouth? Some of you might think it's um, um, uh, a, a come down in terms of the type of strikers that we've got. So let, let me know what you think and put it in the comments. Um, obviously, the reason maybe why, you know, we're going down this route and, and these, these are just rumours at the moment, you know, why we're going down the route because it's a cheap option. It means that we'll have money to possibly go for um, a defensive midfielder. I, mean, I haven't even talked about a defender at the moment because we've been linked with loads of defenders. But today I'm just going to talk about... Um, um, you guess Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid, and um, you know he he um, is a player that we would Arteta is definitely interested in and would love to have at the club. Um, and he has a release clause of forty three point five million, um, which Arsenal are looks like they're happy to to trigger. Whether that's happened or not, we don't know. You know, rumours that came out a few days ago um, that we had triggered it and we are in talks with him. And even up to yesterday, um, there was talk that um, to even put more icing on the cake that um, uh, the uh, Ghanaian's father um, was on um, a, a radio station called True FM and said that he called his son and asked him whether the rumours were true and his son said it was. So, obviously, everybody's jumped on this. Everybody saying that, you know, Thomas Partey is going to be coming to Arsenal. Brilliant. Lovely. And I know Atletico Madrid are trying their hardest to lock him down to a new deal, a new five-year deal, doubling his wages to um, uh, 130 um, million. And... Um, you know, um, also increasing his release clause to 110 million euros, which equates to around about 83 million pounds. Um, so when you hear news <coughs> coming out that his father has been talking and saying, yes, it is true, Arsenal are in talks with him. Well, yeah, at some point, our bubbles will have to burst because um, on 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 uh, today, um, Thomas Partey's um, agents have come out and um, basically said um, that there is no truth in this. There is no talks have taken place with um, um, Arsenal or them. Um, his representative come out and said, "No, nothing like that's happened. We haven't taken no, no no talks have taken place." So you know, um, and they're just saying it's totally untrue. That's you know, wherever you got that information from, it's not true. So you know. I'm just hoping I'm just hoping that you know somehow some way uh, how um, Arsenal will try and see if they can um, um, get something going with this with, with um, Thomas Partey you know um, maybe talks are going and we just don't know we just don't know as I said it's all speculation media social media you name it anything that comes out everybody's jumping on it you know what I mean I desperately would like us to to get um, Thomas Partey and I think we would need to get rid of a few players maybe to, to fund that. Um, namely, um, Lucas Torreira, who's, you know, possibly if, if we do go for Thomas Partey, could end up going back to um, um, Italy. I know there's two clubs that are interested in him. And you've got the likes of Mustafi, you've got um, um, uh, uh, um, Shaka, or Shaka, who... Their, their contracts and their situation is, you know, their, their, their contracts is running down. It's not as close as, um, say, Aubameyang's, 
but their future is still a bit uncertain with Arsenal and whether you know Mikel Teta is going to still work with these guys. So at the moment, um, yeah, it, it was good, great reading in, in you know in on on the not, not not necessarily the news, but on the on the these um, media platforms that you know Thomas Partey's father's definitely confirmed that we we're in talks. I only to read today that um, his representative said none of this is true. But I'm hoping that Arsenal can pull their fingers out and, and try and get this one over the line. Whether that will happen or not, we just don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Listen, um, I'm not going to go on in much more. Um, I just hope that um, that something happens um, in the next coming weeks. Um, we still haven't actually signed anybody yet. So we're just still waiting for that, that first signing. And as, as you can see with this um, COVID situation, it makes things very much uncertain in terms of clubs going out and spending. So a lot of it is just media, r rumor, speculation. And we Arsenal, we're, we're always linked you know, with players. We're always linked with players. Um, but you'll just hope that one of those links will be something that's concrete. So let's see what happens. Please like, subscribe, share, please leave your comments in and um, I'll speak to you on the next one. Take care.